what to see in Florence. Here is a complete guide for you. Florence is undoubtedly one of the most important art cities in Italy. And who comes here uh, definitely doesn't risk to be bored between the museums, markets, churches, art and culture. You can stay here a month and uh, have always something new to discover. What are the most important points of interest? Here is a complete guide for you. Ponte Vecchio. Uh, the Ponte Vecchio, uh, which means the old bridge, uh, is definitely the most iconic monument in Florence. It's a 14th century bridge built in the city as a market bridge and in the Middle Ages you would actually buy meat uh, on Ponte Vecchio. This is also the only bridge that survived World War II and thanks to the Medici family since the late 16th century you can't buy meat on the bridge anymore but the bridge is full of gold shops. In fact, it's the most sparkling bridge in Florence. At the Uffizi Gallery. The Uffizi Gallery is the most important museum in town. Inside you can admire the masterpieces by Giotto, Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo. It's difficult to think about a visit in Florence without a visit at the Uffizi. Galleria dell'Accademia. Galleria dell'Accademia is the second most popular museum among the visitors who come to Florence and the reason of its fame is very simple. Inside you can admire the original statue of Michelangelo's David, the true icon of the Italian Renaissance. The Bargello Museum. The Bargello Museum is absolutely compulsory for all the sculpture lovers who visit Florence. In fact, it's the most important sculpture museum in the world. Inside, you can admire the magnificent Bacchus and Tondo, Pitti by Michelangelo, and the Bronze David by Donatello. The Medici chapels. The Medici chapels are a museum where all the lovers of Michelangelo's art have to go. Uh, in fact, inside you will visit the so-called New Sacristy, a funerary chapel that Michelangelo designed for the Medici family. In this space, the architect managed to unite architecture and sculpture, creating an absolute masterpiece. The Cathedral and the Piazza Duomo. Uh, it is almost impossible to visit Florence without discovering the holy center of the city, uh, the square in front of the cathedral, the Piazza Duomo, with all the uh, most sacred monuments. The baptistry, dedicated to St. John the Baptist, the cathedral, Santa Maria del Fiore, the bell tower and the cathedral museum. You will need a half day to visit the whole complex, but uh, if you decide to climb uh, the Brunelleschi's dome or uh, the bell tower, it's definitely worth the time you spend. Basilica San Lorenzo. Uh, the first cathedral of Florence, however, was located at San Lorenzo. Later on, this church became the center of the power of the Medici family who lived in the neighborhood. Uh, if you visit the church, you can admire Brunelleschi's architecture and Donatello's sculpture. It's definitely worth visiting. Santa Maria Novella. During your visit in Florence, it's worth uh, entering one of the two Dominican convents uh, in the city, Santa Maria Novella or San Marco. Uh, inside Santa Maria Novella, you will find many treasures of Renaissance art, including the famous Trinity by Masaccio, the first fresco with the correct use of linear perspective. San Marco. San Marco is the second Dominican convent in the city, rebuilt in the mid-15th century thanks to the funds um, made um, accessible by Cosimo the Elder de Medici. Inside, the rooms of the friars were decorated by a Dominican painter, Fra Angelico. It's another little treasure hidden among the Florentine streets. Santa Croce. Uh, during the Middle Ages, Florence uh, at 
mm, attracted the Dominicans but also the Franciscan order and Santa Croce became their center here in the city. Uh, today the Basilica is a place where you can discover the fresco painting and uh, the frescoes painted by Giotto, the famous medieval author, but here you will also find many tombs of the famous Italians including Michelangelo, Galileo or Machiavelli. Santo Spirito. Uh, the most important church on the other side of the Arno River is Santo Spirito, a very important center for the development of the Renaissance. Imagine that here in the library of the friars, uh, the famous poet Francesco Petrarca discovered the text of Saint Augustine. Uh, in the church you will admire the beautiful crucifix by Michelangelo and the Pala Nerli, an altarpiece by the Florentine painter Filippino Lippi. San Mignato al Monte. Uh, if you are not afraid of longer walks, you can also climb the top of the hill that guards the city from the south and visit one of the oldest churches in town, San Mignato al Monte. This basilica dating back to 1018 is a uh, real time machine. It will uh, bring you back to the 11th century. After your visit you can get down and uh, take pictures from the Piazzale Michelangelo and then through the Rose Garden when, uh, where I am now you can actually get back to the center. The Pitti Palace and the Boboli Gardens. Uh, in Florence you can visit also many Renaissance palaces uh, of the various uh, important families. If you want to travel in time and visit the court of the uh, Medici Dukes, you have to visit Pitti Palace and the Boboli Gardens. Uh, the main floor of the Pitti Palace is today an art gallery that um, displays a very rich painting collection that once belonged to the Grand Dukes of Tuscany. Uh, after the visit to the museum you can discover the garden and relax uh, among you know the nature after a very long uh, walk uh, in the center. The Palazzo Vecchio. Uh, the Palazzo Vecchio was uh, the uh, seat of the government of Florence during the Middle Ages. It was uh, the palace of the so-called priors who ruled the city uh, between the 13th and the uh, 16th uh, century. Uh, later on, uh, the Medici family transformed this palace into their first ducal residence. Uh, inside, you can discover the beautiful room of the 500s and the private rooms of the ducal family. Palazzo Medici. Uh, before moving to Palazzo Vecchio, the Medici family occupied the Palazzo Medici, uh, which was actually the first Renaissance palace built in mid 15th century in Europe, thanks to the money of Cosimo the Elder. Now, during the visit to the palace, you can uh, discover the courtyard and the private uh, chapel of the family, and also the Baroque a room of the um, mirrors decorated by Luca Giordano during the 17th century uh, for the Riccardis who bought the palace from the Medicis. What you can visit in Florence walking? Uh, the good news is that the center of Florence is really small, so you can actually walk everywhere. The only point that is a little bit more distant than the others is the Basilica of San Miniato. You can get there with a taxi uh, and then you can walk down the hill uh, to get back uh, to uh, the center. Uh, what are the other activities you can do in Florence? So my advice is that you go to one of the food markets in the city. There is not a better place where you can learn about the uh, local Tuscan cuisine than the Mercato di San Lorenzo and the Mercato di Sant'Ambrogio. The markets are open uh, from Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. A uh, very important thing to do in Florence is also to eat. Uh, you have to try our artisan ice cream and if you want you can also try our street food, Lampredotto. Uh, it's a sort of a tripe, it's the fourth stomach of a cow uh, that you will find on a little uh, food trucks in the center. Uh, Lampredotto is boiled for hours in broth and then served with a bun with a parsley sauce and a spicy pepperoncino. 
Another way how to explore Florence is to visit the artisan workshops. If you lose yourselves between the narrow streets in the center, uh, there you will find the small workshops uh, where people will uh, make manually handbags, purses, working the leather, or uh, making uh, jewelry. Uh, you can still meet uh, people who do the same professions, manual professions that their grandfathers centuries ago. Do you want to discover the territory on a slower pace? Contact me for your personal itinerary.